Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where each Monday we attempt to bring some type of uh, knowledge and enlightenment out to their, to our viewing audience and our listening audience, uh, some practical matters that people can perhaps incorporate into their own lives and into their own health and wellness. Uh, and here at Seclair, being an integrative holistic a psychiatric facility. We, again, do not look at people as depression. We do not look at people as uh, phobias. We do not look at people as anxiety. We look at them as human beings who happen to be dealing with something. So one of the first things that we do is try to examine mother, mind, body, and spirit, everything that's happening in their life, and what type of enhancement, what type of modality can we offer to them that would be of best benefit to them and uh, their loved ones and have a productive, happy life. So, and again, I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. And on my right would be... Kayla Esterline. I'm a PA student from St. Francis University. And on my left... And my name's Sasha Zelesnik. I'm the physician assistant here at Seclair. Yes, yes. And uh, you may see that we have uh, some props here in front of us and, and there are horses. So one of the modalities that we've been looking into here at Seclair is, uh, is equine therapy. And perhaps you could uh, tell us a little bit about what exactly the definition of that is and how you became involved in, with that, Sasha. Absolutely. And, you know, first off, I kind of like to say, you know, here at Seclair, we really do take pride in just kind of like what Jim was saying, not only establishing patients with a diagnosis and providing them with appropriate, you know, medical treatment with medications, things like that. But we really realize that there's a lack of good alternative therapies and sometimes medications just are not enough for people and it's important for them to have opportunity to find benefit in some other avenue. So equine therapy is one of the ways we are looking to offer patients that other avenue. And equine therapy is, you know, very similar to other animal assisted therapies in a lot of way. And, you know, people are very familiar with dog, you know, psychotherapy, whereas a dog, you know, is incorporated into the therapeutic setting and it helps people develop trust with themselves and with their therapist. And horses are kind of special because it offers a lot of additional areas of interaction, you know, riding beyond more than just petting a dog or making a dog sit. It really takes a lot more skill to control a horse. So in that way, it, it gives us more ability to interact with the patient and help them learn things that are with the horse that can also be incorporated into their relationships and lifestyle. And it's really a cool concept and horses are really kind of special. Well, I've noticed that uh, sometimes when you go into one of the nursing homes, you go into assisted living homes. You ever been in one of those places, Kayla? Yes, I have. Yes, and quite often, sometimes they'll have uh, cats, they'll have dogs running yeah. around. Have you seen those? Yeah, at, um, the assisted living home that I used to work at, we had a big very fat lab named Hank, I think. And uh, was, tell, tell us about Hank. And Oh, he was very loving, very calm. Um, he wasn't supposed to have cookies, but people <laughs> always gave him cookies because they would forget that he was on diet. But he was, he was very sweet. Well, sure. And then a lot of times uh, the, the idea of that is the therapy, that uh, alternative therapies is these people can uh, not be alone. And they can have, and touch is such an important important deal in, in, in any type of therapy, uh, human or human touch or the others. So uh, perhaps you could uh, talk a little bit about how, and I haven't seen any horses in uh, assisted living homes recently. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that definitely is a, a pro in some cases and a limitation of horses as well. Obviously, we can't bring them into the living room. So patients have to go and meet the horses in the horses environment, but it, it still kind of brings an interesting aspect to the therapy to go to to a field trip, to a barn, maybe in a little bit of a different setting than an office or confined and area. And you can share with us what unique qualities that horses have that make them uh, therapeutically beneficial for individuals. Sure. And so obviously, you know, dogs are often incorporated and a lot of people will ask me, well, you know, dogs, they're cheaper. You don't have to have a stable for them. But you know, why, why horses? Why not just use dogs? And really, horses really are special in a lot of ways. First off, they're a prey animal versus a dog that's a predatory animal. And what that basically means is in their personalities, dogs will often accept a lot of behaviors from people during their interactions 
and not really give a response to it. They're very tolerant, which is good in a lot of ways, whereas a horse is a prey animal, so they're kind of hyper vigilant and very, very receptive to even small changes in a person's personality. You know, they can know if you're scared, they can know if you're happy, they can know if you're angry or frustrated, and it can change minute by minute, and they're very responsive to those changes because of being a prey animal. So they're almost like a big machine that Tana tells you, you know, if you're lying to yourself about how you're feeling, the horse is gonna let you know. So what you're talking, and, and uh, actually, uh, Sasha, for her master's uh, thesis in, uh, for her program, wrote a, a wonderful paper. It's called The Future Role of Equine Assisted Psychotherapy, Potential Indications, Benefits, and Limitations. And I did read it, and it was uh, very enlightening to me, who had little or no knowledge of this subject. So in, in your paper, you talk about a horse and what you were just talking about, a horse being able to mirror. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So. One of the major aspects that people who deal with horses, even if they aren't therapists or know anything about mental health, they'll often say like, oh, my horse is my mirror to my soul. And kind of in that same way, like I just described, horses are very, very receptive to things that are going on in our head. And if I you know, go to the barn on a bad day, my horse will know it and kind of respond to that in a different way. So it's very interesting that a person might you know, go to a farm and not realize how much tension that they carry with them, how much anxiety they have, or how they aren't as confident in themselves as they should be. And the way the horse responds will be appropriate for that patient. You know, for instance, I had a kid that came to the stable that I keep my horse at, and she was extremely, extremely shy. Went up to the horse and, you know, just barely put her hand up to the horse and the horse was a little bit cautious of her because she didn't have confidence. She didn't exude, you know, I'm gonna take care of you to the horse. So the horse didn't wanna follow her and she was really frustrated at first, but as we kind of walked through the program and she learned to be more confident in what she wanted the horse to do, the horse began to follow her. So it kind of promoted more confident behavior in her. Whereas, you know, it would have been maybe nice, some, some people might wanna hear, oh, the horse, you know, was very, you know, helpful to her and very empathetic that she was feeling scared, but really they don't often act like that and she didn't need that. She didn't need somebody to tell her it's okay, you're scared. She needed something to tell her you need to, to learn to not be scared so that. So what you're saying, this can be a compliment to traditional talk therapy where people through behavioral action can have behavioral change. Absolutely. So it always has to come along with you know how the therapist interacts with the, the horse and interprets how the horse is reacting to the patient's behaviors so that the patient knows, you know, oh well this is why the horse didn't want to follow me. You know, this is what I need to do to change so that I can be more effective in my communication to the horse. And that also overlaps into, you know, can I be more effective in my communication with other people? And I follow that to be that quite often people mis misjudge or misinterpret or perhaps hide the emotions and feelings that they do have and the horse can actually call them out on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it lets you know, you know, in ways that you need to improve because it isn't entirely tolerant of everything. And I'm not saying that most of those therapy horses are very safe so that they aren't going to respond dangerously to things, but they let you know in subtle ways that the behavior, the that your displaying isn't appropriate or isn't as good as it could be. And it kind of makes us be assertive but com and confident, but not aggressive. Kayla, you were uh, mentioning earlier about there's someone in your world that uh, has benefited from uh, being involved with horses. Yes, I have a uh, little baby cousin who has some problems with seizures. And because of that, he is developmentally delayed. Um, and his parents will take him riding occasionally um, and to the equine therapy. Um, and he, every time they put him on a horse, like normally he's like climbing on everything and very hyper and they put him on a horse and he just relaxes, he lays down and he'll like put his arms up like here, like he's just reclining. And um, I also think it's helped him with his communication skills a little bit too, because he is nonverbal, but I think that's, helped him to at least it, even if he can't communicate what he wants maybe to understand a little bit more what other people are feeling 
could you follow up on that a little bit? Yeah, and that is so cool that you know you actually had an experience with equine therapy because it is kind of an up and coming thing. But a lot of people are realizing how beneficial that it can be. And you know, we all we talked about kind of how horses can be beneficial for people that need to develop, you know, interpersonal skills and confidence and things like that. But even for the more, you know, severely limited people, we found the horses are really beneficial. And part of the reason is that touch that you were kind of mm-hmm. discussing and the body experience, you know, in the therapy setting, especially as it is today, we're kind of limited in how we can interact through touch with our patients, which is, you know, good, neither good nor bad. Right. Animals can kind of reach that special place that we aren't allowed to enter that can give people comfort and a body experience is what we call it in the, the therapeutic setting. And Horses are kind of special in that not only can you pet them and feed them and interact with them, but you can even ride them. And that can create this emotional body experience that other types of animal therapy can't. Really, actually, any therapy really can't include riding an animal. So it's really special in that that body experience can be so powerful to people that are are limited because it's such a primitive need. And we even talk about comparing it to it when you were rocked as a child. So we often just don't tell people to do things. We ask, we, we, we tell them that there's legitimate empirical evidence behind that this works. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about some research that's been done as far as equine therapy? Yeah, and one of the limitations of equine therapy and really all of this kind of options is that they do have limitations because it's hard to kind of fund that type of research and organize it and establish the benefits. But there has been a lot of scientific evidence that horses are benefit. Postmortem is another ADHD, schizophrenia. And I kind of went through all my own studies in my master's paper, but you know, there really are, you know, statistical evidence based on, you know, controls and all that good scientific method that was beneficial. Great. And if in the audience would have some inquiries as to how they could get in time involved in equine therapy, could you have them? Sure. And, you know, some of the, the two major ones is it's called PATH and M- are the two majors that promote equine assisted therapies here in the NIS. Kind of an up and coming thing and getting in aspect of therapy. So we'll venture people. But until then, you know, I even have the links post to sites. We'll definitely tag those links on to uh, this particular. So would you be any more dealing with uh, Ayla? I think it tries like I um, the first, first time I was the do and I think the horse kind of responded to that and he was blind how much confidence in a horse I think not a lot <laughs> 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 and that is why the therapist is also you know necessary beyond I'm just learning to ride a horse the therapeutic relationship between the, the patient and therapist has to be there too to kind of guide you through that whole Absolutely. Situation. Well, it sounds like sounds like a whole uh, wonderful area that that's opening up uh, to assist individuals with uh, with different types of disorders, mm-hmm. for sure. So, so we're very glad that uh, you've joined us today, and should you cross us here at at Seclair. So we're going to ask uh, to take us out. All right, to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook, plus us on Google+, or follow us on Twitter under Sickler Life. And keep an eye on any of these for our next live recording Mondays around new your own questions. And this and other youtube.com slash Sickler video. And find audio, speaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.sickler.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And for those of you, I'm going to show right now and with the introduction to an old uh, black comedy was, a horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course.
course, the horse is the famous Mr. Ed. So I'll uh, we'll leave with you with that today. And of course, uh, the free prescription that we always give bulls, unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, you can join Kayla and Sasha and I when we fish without bait. Until the next time, it's a clear we thank you. <laughs>